Nope, we're good, we're good. I hate talking in front of people. He's very trans. Yeah, I saw her last night. I'm sorry. Thanks. Yeah, we'll take a step back. Okay. Um, uh, hi, I'm John Charamanti. I work here. It's nice. Um, it's Mike Burke. Really? John Charamanti. Mike Burke. So I got my house too when I go. Hi, Mom. I'm home. It's Mike Burke. What's up? All right. Listen, we got a lot to do tonight. Uh, first things first, I want to thank um, our building administration. They have supported us on the job program for so long now. We want to thank them. Mr. Dolan, Mr. Dolan, Mr. Dolan, not, not related. Um, Mr. Costa, uh, Mr. Cruz, and Mr. Um, um, Mr. Heisman slash Mr. Johnson. Long story, I'll talk about it later. So I want to thank them first of all. Thank you. Clap, come on. Feel nice, loud audience, we need it. The last night, they're all sad that they had a hate reading shows. Uh, also, the Board of Education, they are a uh, tremendous, tremendous support of what we do. We want to thank them as well for all that they do for us. So, give it up for our Board of Ed. Uh, all the teachers that have helped us. Every year, the, the list gets longer and longer and longer. Um, we've got to go by departments this year. We've got to go Art, Ms. Clark, and Ms. Berner. Right. Science, Mr. Mayorka, and Ms. McKinney. Happy birthday, Marie. By the way, let's stop. We've got to talk. We've got we to talk. You guys got to make more noise than that. This is, this is bad. Let's go. Make some noise! Um, yes, although you're going to see 10 students on stage tonight, uh, there were about 50 students off stage that built this set, wore the costumes, did the makeup, did the lights, did the sound, so make sure you get a round of applause for all that they did. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, Michael Chavo's team and Vinny Jardy's team. They really did a lot for us. We want to thank the custodial staff for what they did. They were a team, uh, a tag team part of the set and the lights and they worked so hard with us. We want to thank them and we invited them here tonight. Thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, Ryan Cavanaugh is our student director tonight. Ryan. Decided on tuxes. Why are you wearing that? I'm sorry, I didn't know. You this look is all atrocious. I didn't. I know. I tried. I didn't know we were doing tuxes tonight. I know, Mike. You look fine, but Charmati, you... what the hell's going on? I'm sorry. I, I, I thought this, I was. Yeah. I forget. Oh, uh, and one more thing. I would like to remind you all to do something that Mr. Charmati has failed to do my entire high school career. Please silence all cell phones and babies. No one likes to take it. See you soon. Alright guys, sit back. Come on, see you doing rumors. No. Dr. 
Dudley? Oh, Dr. Dudley, I'm so glad to see you. Your service said you were in the theater. Uh, is that the doctor? I never would have bothered you, but this is an emergency. Is that the doctor? I'm Chris Gorman. My husband, Ken, and I are good friends with Charlie Brock. Is that the doctor? It's the doctor! It's the doctor! Why didn't you say so? Oh, doctor, I'm afraid there's been an accident. Well, I would have called my own doctor, but my husband, Ken, is a lawyer, and under the circumstances, he thought it best to call Charlie's own physician. All right, well, we arrived here at Charlie's about, about 10 minutes ago, and we were getting out of the car when we suddenly heard this enormous- Don't say anything! Great. What? Don't tell him what happened. Don't tell him. Just do what I say! What about Charlie? It's just a powder burn. He's all right. Just don't tell him. <laughs> they got the doctor out of the theater. Uh, the bullet that was left here, though. I just don't want him to know. Somebody should point down the stairs. Well, what about the blood? It's all right. Just don't tell him. I don't want him to know. <laughs> well, I already told him. We were getting out of the car when we suddenly heard this enormous... What? What did we hear? Uh, we heard... Uh, uh, just a minute, doctor. We heard an, uh, <coughs> an enormous thud. Thought. When he tripped going down the stairs? Good. Good. That's good. Yes, hello, Do Dr. Dooley. Uh, uh, Dudley, I'm sorry. I was talking to my husband. <laughs> you see, um, we were getting out of the car when we suddenly heard this enormous thud. <laughs> it seems Charlie tripped going up the stairs. Down, down the stairs! Down the stairs, yeah. but he's all right. He's sitting up in bed. He'll call you in the morning. He's sitting up in bed. He'll call him in the morning. You! He'll call you! He'll call you in the morning. You're really sorry you disturbed him? I'm really sorry I disturbed him. But you. he's really fine. He's really fine. Thank you. Goodbye. Wait, where are you going? Him! Thank him and say goodbye! What? Thank you and goodbye, doctor. What? Any dizziness? No, no dizziness. No, no dizziness. What? Can he move all his limbs? He can move everything. Get off with the phone! They got him out of Phantom of the Opera. Yes, he can move everything. What? Any slurring of the speech? No slurring of the speech! Don't yell at me! Who dare you? No! No slurring of the speech? What? Any ringing of the ears? No. Tell him no. Yes. A little ringing of the ears. I told you to say no! It sounds more believable to have ringing. Jesus Christ. What? Who? His wife? Myra? Yes, she's oh, here! Oh, she's not here! Don't tell me she's here. I want to speak to her! Dr. Julie, D D Dudley, I'm, I'm sorry. She's not here. I thought she was, but she wasn't. Uh, she just slipped out and she'll be back in a minute. She just slipped back. She'll be out in a minute. Yes, I'll tell her. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dr. Dudley. Uh, I'm so sorry to have bothered you. I, I hope the rest of the show is nice. You know, Ken and I saw it, and we loved it, especially the second act. Who's playing that band? You can review the whole goddamn show to him? Hang up! Charlie's calling me. Just a minute, Charlie! He sounds a lot better. I have to go. I'll tell him. Okay. Thank you. Don't you ever do that to me again! I didn't get sleep right once! You must suspect something! My clothes, I never calls again. Don't answer it. Then why'd you have to answer that one? Because I thought the bullet went through his head, not his earlobe. I was probably standing in the shower. Just, can you just fix me a vodka? <laughs> if he drowned, you're making that call. I don't understand why I'm always the first one here. We've never showed up like once in our lives. Somebody else could have dealt with this. Oh, no, 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 no. What is that? Who is that? Who is that? Am I near the door? Do you see people in here? Do you think I'm on roller skates? Wait a minute. Can't take your time because I do not answer doors. I only speak to Dr. Dudley. Okay, all right. It's going to be Lenny or Ernie or one of the others. Okay. No, you answer it. <laughs> You've got arms. Reach down. I have to try to chop me off man. Just here. Can't you, can't you just hold on for a little bit? <laughs> his best friends are coming for his 10th wedding anniversary. His wife isn't here. He shoots himself in the earlobe. And you expect him to make small talk when they come in. Attempted suicide. 
suicide is a criminal offense. Not to mention a pretty ugly scandal. Charlie is deputy mayor of New York. He's my client and he's my best friend. I have to protect him somehow, don't I? Just, just play hostess for the while. Talk. Oh, what is it? I'm coming apart in the 
see your dress? No, my nerves. I think I'm gonna cry. Oh, I can see. Oh, Chris, your hands are like ice. Something's going on here, isn't it? Lovely, you're so smart. You're so quick to see things. Oh, Chris, you're scaring me. What is it? All right, well, we got here about 10 minutes ago, and we were getting out of the car, when we suddenly heard this enormous... Hey! I was just saying she looks enormously well. <laughs> Isn't that the dress you wore for cerebral palsy? Oh no, I got this for sickle cell. I can't. Uh, 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 where's Lenny? Oh, in the job. Where's Charlie and Moira? Still getting dressed? <laughs> yes, still getting dressed. Oh, is Len happy with his new BMW? Oh, delirious. Did he get the new features he asked for? Oh, more than he asked for. Great. Are you through in there, Ken? I have to go myself. I think Myra's in here. <laughs> Fine. Then I'll use my Lee's bathroom. Uh, call me if she gets back from Japan. Get out of here. Quickly, come on, hurry up. Okay, what did you tell her? You can't remember! It was all happening so fast and I was speaking so fast and I can't remember what I said! Why can't we just tell them what happened because they're gonna find out anyway? I don't know what happened, kid. No. Go inside and see Charlie. He wants to see you. Me? Why does he want to see me? Oh, he's crying like a baby. He needs a woman. Did you what? <coughs> cry on? I can reason with him, but I can't comfort him. Just let him cry on the shoulder for two minutes for Is God's he sake. still bleeding because I paid twelve hundred dollars for this dress? It's not worth it. Hi, Len. Oh, hi, Ken. Did she tell you what happened? Uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, where are you going? To the John. Well, didn't you just go? Yes, but not enough. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, 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 that hurt. Oh, oh. Very weird. Oh, give me the pretzels. Oh, there's plenty of food in there, but no one's in there. You couldn't have opened these first. Uh, there's a duck, roast ham, smoked turkey, and there's pasta sitting in a bowl with no water. Everything's ready to go, but no one's in there to start. Uh, doesn't that seem strange to you? Not as strange as him peeing twice in a row. You got something sharp for this, a nail file or something? Chris started to tell me something, and then she clammed up. The doors on my BMW open like tissue paper, but this thing's like steel! Her hands were like ice! She couldn't even look me straight in the eye! This would be a safe place to keep your jewelry! God damn it! Why are they taking so long to get dressed? What is that about, huh? Well, what are you so damn suspicious for? Give the people a chance to come down. Oh, you don't notice anything is wrong? Yes, I noticed. I noticed that the towels in the bathroom were piled up on the sink and not on the rack. And I also noticed that there was a sheet of half left of toilet paper. I think it's sloppy, but not a scandal. Really? I'm not so sure I rule out a scandal. Oh, you don't think I know what you're talking about? You don't think I hear what's going on? I hear gossip, I hear rumors, and I won't listen to that crap, you understand me? He is my friend and she is the wife of my friend. Fine! Forget it! I don't listen to filthy garbage about my friend! I said! Forget it! Fine. Come here. What's wrong with here? They could hear us there. Here is better. Will you come here? <sighs> it's not good. What's not good? What, I heard. what did you hear? Did you love your voice? Oh, I haven't said anything yet. All right, just stop going around about my rent. Oh, oh, this hurts me. Can you come to my other side? I can't turn. All right, there's stuff going about about Myra and Charlie, only no one tell to my face because they know I won't listen. Oh, listen, tell to my face! Jesus, why would you want to hear things about our best friends? He's my best client and he trusts me, not just about investments in taxes, but personal things. I don't do his taxes. What's the rumor? Jesus, you won't be satisfied until I tell you, will you? I won't even sleep with you until you tell me. What's the rumor? <laughs> 
I'll be your friend, Myra, upstairs. She's having herself a little thing, okay? What kind of thing? Oh, do I have to spell it out for you? A thing, a man, a guy, a fella, a fair. Who knows? She's doing something somewhere on the slide, somewhere, and it's not with Charlie, okay? You don't know that. You've only heard it. You haven't seen it. Of course I haven't seen it. You think they invite me to come along? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you are so naive. It's incredible. Get real, Lenny. Myra is not having anything with anybody. Your friend Charlie, however, is running up a hell of a motel bill. Charlie, my friend Charlie, no way, not a chance. He wouldn't even look at another woman. Oh, he may not be looking at her, but he's screwing her. Slow your voice. Who told you that? Someone in the tennis club told me. Our tennis club? What is it, a sacred temple? People gossip there. Christ, bunch of hypocrites standing around in their brand new Nikes and Reeboks, destroying people's lives. Who told you this? I'm not going to tell you. You don't like the person anyway. What's the difference if I like them or not? Who told you? Carol Newman. Carol Newman! I know, I hate I hate that goddamn woman. She's an ugly little swallow tan tennis ball. How are you two doing? Oh, just fine, Ken. How did I see you? Oh, just the plastic. Back. Wasn't it Cal Newman who started the other rumor? What other rumor? The, the one that you and I were breaking up. <laughs> no, it wasn't Carol Newman. It wasn't? Then who was it? It was me. You? You started the rumor? Me, you, the both of us. When we were thinking about separating, didn't we go around and tell everyone? Yes, we told friends. That bitch told Trey! Hey! Hey, did not call Carol Newman a bitch to my face! Besides, Carol Newman didn't start the rumor about Charlie. Someone else at the tennis club told her. Well, who was the someone else who told her? Harold Green. Harold Green? Who the hell is Harold Green? He's a new member. He was just voted in last week. I never voted for him. Yes, you did. By proxy. We were in the Rita. <laughs> Christ, bunch of blood. goddamn proxy members such rumors about my best friend! Who does he play tennis with? He doesn't play tennis, he's a social member. He just eats lunches there. So this son of a bitch is a goddamn proxy social new member who just eats lunches and doesn't even play tennis? What does he do for a living? He sells BMWs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, did anyone else get here yet? Not to speak of, no. Is anything wrong? No, why? Does anything seem... Wrong. You. Yes, besides the fact that there's no food, no host, no hostess, and that you and Chris only appear one at a time and never together, yes, I say something was wrong. <laughs> okay, alright, sit down. Ah, sit down. Okay. Alright, I, I, I can't keep this quiet anymore. We have, we have a big problem on our, on our hands. Uh, <laughs> what did I tell you, Claire? You said, oh, oh, what is it, Ken? Tell us! Well, uh, <coughs> Charlie... Charlie... Charlie's been shot. Oh, what? Shot! Oh, my God! David Price! No! 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 In the head. In the head? The head! Oh my god, he was shot in the head! It's okay, it's okay. It was just a superficial wound. Where did the bullet go? Uh, through his left earlobe. The earlobe? Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. There are holes in my earlobes. It doesn't hurt. I saw this coming, I swear. The truth, Ken. Did she do it? <gasps> Who? Myra, for Christ's sake. Who else? Now, why would Myra want to shoot Charlie? You don't know what's going on. You haven't heard? Oh, what's going on? Charlie's been having a hot affair with someone! It's not hot! Nobody said it was hot! You don't know that it was hot! It was an affair, a plain affair. Who told you this? Oh, nobody told me that. What I heard was that Myra was having a little thing. A thing with who? Some bitch in the club named Carol Newman. <laughs> she is not a bitch! And she only told me what Harold Green told her. Who the hell is Harold Green? Oh, thank God, they're probably a social member who just comes to the club to eat lunches and judges rumors! Well, it seems to me Charlie's the one who's having the affair if Myra was hysterical enough to shoot right, him. No, no. Myra didn't fire the gun. 
Charlie did. He, he tried to kill himself. It was attempted suicide. Suicide! Jesus Christ! <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> I still think we shouldn't say anything until I get the real story. 
Right, Claire, open, open the door. Hey, Crystal, get some drinks. Let's look like we're having fun. Okay. Wait, so what is it? We're telling Ernie, but we're not telling Cookie? We're not telling him out of that! I'm sorry we told you! Just open the door. No, 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 He's trying to mix up. I, I can get the story out here. Uh, Chris, where'd you put the Valium? I hid it in the medicine cabinet. Great hiding space. <laughs> So Mrs. Thatcher replied, I think it was my umbrella stand. <laughs> oh, yes, we're ready, we're ready. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, 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 Hello, Chris. Hello, Ben. So tell me, what did Mr. Gorbachev say? <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev? I don't know. I never ate cat food before. <laughs> Charlie and 
Uh-huh. Isn't that terrific? <laughs> no, I just us. not terrific. Because we're all going to chip in. <laughs> just like in the good old days, before money, before success. <laughs> Aren't those the best times of my life? No, I hate those times. I love success. Well, don't you find these are greedier times? Lazier, more selfish. Nobody wants to work anymore. I work 14 hours a day. I cook 37 meals a week. I cook on my television show. I cook for my family. I cook for my neighbors. And I cook for my dogs. Now, I was looking forward to a relaxed evening. But I don't want to spoil the fun. What do we have to do? We have to cook. You mean all of us in the kitchen? Together? Except for Charlie and Myra. Claire and I told them to stay upstairs and that we'll get them when we're ready. Well, what are we going to make? Uh, it's all laid out. Uh, roast ham, spawn turkey, duck, and pasta. Roast ham and duck? That's too much cholesterol for me. Ernie, we didn't come here to live longer just to have a good time. I just don't understand why we're all wearing our best clothes to cook a dinner. Oh, that's not your best clothes. It's a 50-year-old Polish dress. It's a 60-year-old Russian dress. The dress is hardly an issue worth arguing about. I didn't say we wouldn't cook it. She didn't say we wouldn't cook it. Why is everyone getting so worked up about this? Let's not turn this into group therapy, Ernie, please. <laughs> this is nothing like group therapy, Claire. You, of all people, should know that. Oh, why don't we just invite everybody from your Thursday night group, Ernie, shall we? Listen, I, I don't want to take the blame for joining the party. I'll do all the cooking, and Ernie will do all the serving. <laughs> Please, be quiet. We don't want to spoil the surprise for Charlie and Myra. What surprise? It was their idea! Oh, all right, then it's settled. Just give me 45 minutes, and I promise you'll have the best dinner party you've ever had!
Charlie's. Oh, Ken and Charlie! Oh, Ken and Charlie's not called from the value. Oh, they hung up. I already took the message. You couldn't have told me that when I was on the balcony. What'd they say? Oh, they said Dr. Dudley already called this number, and he doesn't want to be called to the theater again. Oh, really? That's it? I'm getting a new doctor. I'm not putting my life in the hands of some drama critic from Mount Sinai Hospital. Hello, this is Leonard Gans again. Tell Dr. Dudley that he did not call this number, and please have him call me back. It's important. So what did Ken want Chris upstairs for? To talk to Ken's doctor. Ken wouldn't be able to hear what the doctor was saying through the phone. I've got to get back upstairs. What, you mean she told the doctor a gun? Why not? Then she'll have to explain about Charlie. No, she was going to say that he was outside of the manhole covered blood next to his head. That's a good idea. Except that he said a service that he wasn't in. He said he was still at the theater. There must be some flu going around on Broadway or something. <laughs> they purposely wait Tom on top of the stairs. Answer that, will you? Hello? Oh, Dr. Dudley, thanks for calling back. Do you want to speak to him? No, I'm taking a stress test. You know, if Ernie can't figure out what's going on here, I'm not going to his group anymore. Hello, Dr. Dudley? Thanks for calling me back. Yes, well, about 30 minutes ago, some idiot nailed me in my BMW, and I have a case of whiplash here. <laughs> Ch Charlie? Charlie Brock? No, I was going about Charlie Why? Oh, Jesus, Dr. Dudley, Charlie's Dr. Two. No, Dr. Dudley's doing much better now. He's upstairs resting. Chris? Chris Borman? You know Ken and Chris? Ah, uh, yes, I think he did call. Hold on. Oh, my God! What? He's Ken's Dr. Two! Did you hear about Kenny's 
death. He's better off. He's out of this thing now. Why are we protecting Charlie this way? Ken's deaf. Lenny can't turn his neck. Cookie's walking like a giraffe. I'm getting a blood contusion. For what? One more gunshot, the whole world's gonna know anyway. The whole world doesn't care. Paraguay and Bolivia don't give a rat's ass. Oh, there's another car coming up. Who else was invited? Harry and Joan, but they're in Venezuela. They could get called later. They're gonna call from Venezuela? Jeez, maybe they will hear about it in Bolivia. So who's coming up the driveway? Maybe it's Myra. Maybe she'll come back. Myra drives a Porsche. This is an Audi. Ask Ken. He might know. Ken is reading lips right now. I don't think he can pick up on Audi.
Yes, fine. I feel so frumpy. No, you look beautiful. My hair isn't right, is it? I saw you looking at it in the car. No, I wasn't. What were you looking at then? Oh, gee, I don't know. The road, I suppose. I can always tell what you hate what I'm wearing. I love that dress. I always have. This is the first time I've worn it. I always have admired your taste. That's what I meant. It is so hard to please you sometimes. What did I say? It's what you don't say that really drives me crazy. What I don't say? How could it drive you crazy if I don't even say it? I don't know. It's... It's, it's the looks you always give me. I must give you any looks. You look at me all the time. Because you're always asking me to look at you. Well, it'd be nice if I didn't have to ask, wouldn't it? It would be nice if you didn't need me to look, which would make it unnecessary to ask. God, this conversation! Oh, I can't even believe I'm saying any of this! Oh my gosh, you are so frustrating sometimes! God, it's like... If you, hadn't even know, if you haven't even noticed, we walked in the room together, and it was already done. Cassie, please don't start. <laughs> We're 45 minutes late as it is, and I do not want to ruin this life controlling my room. We're 45 minutes late because you scowled at every dress I tried on. Those weren't scowls, they were smiles. For God's sake, you always think my smiles look like scowls. Just like you think my grins look like frowns, and my frowns look like yawns. Don't sneer at me! Oh, don't worry. That wasn't a sneer. It was a pee. God, this conversation is up and out! I can't even believe I'm saying it is! We sound like some goddamn TV couple! Oh, so now we're going to get into language, huh? Cook? 
all of my friends know about your bimbo. What do I care about the domestic help? I don't know what has gotten into you lately. Are you bothered by my political vocation? Are you somehow threatened because I'm running for the Senate? Dottie. I'll have Toddy review this. 
Ernie, um, Cookie's waiting in the emergency room. Um, there's your wife, Perrier. Nice meeting you, Glenn. Thought I was the butler. I need a drink really badly. How are your ears, Ken? My beer's fine, I don't care. Jeez. Maybe you ought to, you ought to get some eardrops. Uh, did you see anyone you were looking for the bandages in the cabinet? No, I didn't think of that. Oh, that's fine. I'll go with them. Oh, no, 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 I just remembered. There weren't any. I, I forgot I looked. Is there a cat in here? <laughs> I could have just... There's a cat! It's Mary right now! That's the phone, Ken. Wait, a bone? It's a cat, not a dog. I just want a bone. I'll get it. Hello? Yes? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Operator. We have a bad connection. I can't hear you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's Harry and Joe from Venezuela. They want to talk to Charlie and Myra. Oh, Joe? Oh, that's, that's Cassie's cousin. Hold on. I'll go get Cassie. I'm sure she wants to speak to him. <laughs> Hello, Joni. It's Lenny. How you doing? Cassie? Oh, yes, we're all here. Oh, we're having a great time. Cassie? Uh, um, of course Charlie and Myra are here. What did you think? <laughs> Cousin Joan, she's in Venezuela, remember? Hello? Oh, Joan! What a nice surprise! No, it's Claire. Oh, yes, it's a terrific party! <laughs> Let me get this straight. 
Myra is gone. Right. The servants are gone. Right. Charlie goes and shoots himself in the earlobe. Right. See, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. right. Why didn't I see any of it? People running up and down stairs, nobody answering the door, and cans of shaving cream exploding. I'm on the staff at Bellevue Hospital. How could I believe such a story? You never let on. <laughs> Listen, I was so desperate for a smoke, I went to Charlie's bathroom and tried to light up a Q-tip. Don't you have any self-controls? Of course. I only smoked half. Something's wrong with Ken. Maybe he's still hungry. You want seconds, Ken? Oh, be quiet a minute. What is it, Ken? Nobody told us! And I wanted to call the police! Ken 
you wouldn't let me call the police. Claire, didn't I want to call the police? Then he wanted to call the police. Thank you. So what are you saying? That it's Ken's responsibility? That he takes the rap for this? No. 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 What we're saying is, if it comes down to it, he is the most logical, that's all. I can't believe this. Ken almost went deaf trying to protect Charlie and everyone else here. I expected a little bit more from his friends. My god, what a bunch of whips. Have you heard any of this, Ken? Well, answer her, Glenn, have you? <laughs> I'm having the first headache I've ever had. 
ever had in my life. You know what I just remembered? Ernie's last name is Cusack. That begins with a C. You just remembered your husband's last name? Oh my god, I can hear my own pulse. It's slightly up, but it's not that bad. Can I take a cab? I'm very good with things like that. I love you. I swear to God, Cassie, keep this up and you're going to end up where your crystal is. Don't threaten me, sweetheart, or I'll start giving names. That's it. That's it! I'm going to stay here, but I'm going to put you in a taxi and you are out of here! Never mind, I'll walk! Walk? That's what you want to talk about! Cassie, wait! Cassie, I'm sorry! I feel badly for her. Especially because one day she'll grow old and die. <laughs> you know what else I just thought of? Glenn went to Japan! Oh, sit on it, will you? You know, if I had you all in my group, I would never need another group again. Wait, shh, quiet. I, I can hear them. Hear who? Glenn and Cassie. I swear, I can hear him through the driveway. This man is a German shepherd. I don't think it's your business to be listening, Ken. If he can hear to the walls, it's his business. Right. Well, um, they're fighting. I'm talking about a woman. Cassie's really upset. I'll say. She just kicked the side of a car. Who owns a BMW? <laughs> well, I'm trying to talk to my bed. I got it. Right. I know what she's going to say. Can't you think of 
something else. I did. I thought of the mother, the father, the cousin, the wife, and the hip. Nothing satisfies you people. That's because there's no logic behind it. Nothing in that story is plausible. We do not need plausible. The man is in shock. Mental anguish and emotional despair. Logic doesn't mean shit to him right now. Excuse my language. Oh, God. The telephone. Of course we know it's a telephone, Ernie. We all have telephones. Hello? Yes, yes he is. Oh, who's calling? I see. All right, hold on, please. It's a woman for Glenn. So? It sounds like my Oh, my. Shake up again. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Glenn is outside just now. Can I tell him who's calling? I see. All right, hold on, please. I can't tell. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Well, what did they say when you asked who was calling? She said, just a friend. Well, how did she say it? She said, just a friend. How many ways are there to say it? I'll tell you how many ways. Nervous, phony, sincere, drunk. Scared, guilty, lying. Often angered, perplexed, deceitful. All of this This is, is not Scrabble! <laughs> no, she didn't ask for you. She didn't ask for you either. I know my voice. Let me talk to her. Hello? No, this is Ken's friend, Lynn. No, Ken is going to get Glenn. What? You know, you sound awfully familiar. <laughs> Do I know you? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, hold on for a second. I don't think it's her. Oh. Well, who does it sound like? Meryl Streep. Meryl oh, Streep? Why would Meryl Streep fall here? I didn't say it was Meryl Streep, but you know how she sounds in the movies. She's always doing the character perfectly, but it's not really her. That's how she sounds. Like it's not Meryl Streep? And now we're playing Trivial Pursuit. This is not a game show, people! <coughs> Ken, will you please go get Glenn? Hello? Somebody went to get Glenn. Hello? She hung up. She must have gotten suspicious. Wait, wait I, I hear something. Oh, but it's the Concord landing in London. It's a car pulling up the driveway. Oh, maybe it's Myra. Oh, maybe it was Harry and Joe from Venezuela. We've got trouble. Oh, God, we got trouble. What is it? The police. There's a police car. Well, I'll get it. I told you, you idiot. I told you we should have got the police. Now look what happened to the police. Get the police. Who called the police? Maybe it was Myra. Maybe it was Charlie. Oh, maybe it was Cassie. You were fighting her in my car. Did she use a phone in my car? Oh. Yes. What about the call? She hit me with it. She broke my phone, my new phone, my new car. All right, just be quiet, everyone. We have to figure out what we're going to tell them when they come in. They're trying to talk to Cassie. She won't blow the windows down. My windows? They're going to bust my windows. I'm going to take my car home in an envelope. Why did you leave her out there? She's in no condition to be answering police questions. Oh, well, let me tell you. She's in a pretty good enough condition to smash my house. Oh. And this man is running for the state senate. I wouldn't let him run for Chinese food. What is wrong with you people? I have a six-year-old child that who pays better than we do. Good. Then get him over here and tell him to talk to the police. Guard. Lay off, Lenny. She's doing her part. She calls out for Dudley. Everybody called Dr. Dudley! He's in the yellow pages in China! Maybe Dudley called the police. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yes. Yes, he is. Oh, Hold on, please. Glenn, it's for you. It's the same woman who called before. What single guy? I don't know. Maybe it was Myra. Maybe it was Smell Street. Smell <laughs> Street? Well, you know how she sounds in the movies? Like she always does the character perfectly, but it's not really her? Well, that's how this person sounded. It's not a cold, it's just, just a telephone Okay, story. okay. The thing we can't do is let them Charlie. Can you have them upstairs or her downstairs? I tried talking to Cassie, but she's already upset. All right, and above all, no false statements. We must keep within the law. This above all, agree. Yeah, to the line of stuff be true, man. The eyes of better men. Are you fucking crazy? They're outside the car. Well, you should talk to a bunch of stupid companies that can't get her out of the car. Well, the guys with the gunshots. What are we talking about the gunshots? Right, right. Wait, 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 w
15 minutes. Shoot him! Somebody grab him! Jump him with that telephone wire! Uh, uh, I'm very serious about this, but I'm not gonna be able to hold my glasses. Wait, 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 wait. I've got it. What? We'll tell them we never heard the gunshots. You mean lie to them? Whatever well, this all about. Great friend. I thank you for all the I'll claim it later. I will. Goodbye. Okay. What's going on? Oh. Well, about six weeks oh, ago, we got stop it, lady. This All right, think, everybody, think. Why didn't we hear the gunshots? Oh, oh, right, right. We're all deaf people. We I meet mean, once a week, and that's why. <laughs> why they call her Cookie. I got it! What? It, it was the Hitler special, the kind that's probably for later we couldn't hear anything else. There was no Hitler program! We made the whole goddamn thing up to pull this asshole! Hey, I think just run out for you, honey. No! No! All right, Claire, put the music on. It was, it was so loud, we, we couldn't hear the gunshots. Claire, put on the music! No, 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 wait! There's one thing I have to do. Someone has to be Charlie, just in case. Just in case what? Just in case the police want to speak to Charlie! All right, Ken is right. Charlie's in no condition to tell them the real story. Because no one is on the real story yet! So I have to make sure the story they do hear isn't the one that's going to get us all in trouble. Never saw a sinking ship empty so fast. Well, I agree. Ken is absolutely right. Thank you. One of you three guys should be Charlie. Um, excuse me. <laughs> when did you move to France? Well, let's be honest here. I never even heard the gunshots. God damn you, bastard! But isn't it illegal to impersonate a real person? Yes, it is, dear. But not if you do it well. Come on. Can you believe we married these men? All right, guys, this is a maximum felony. Do you want to spend the next 30 years in prison wearing a tuxedo? Hey, yeah, we're all in this together. Here's what we're going to choose. Okay. Each of us put out one or two fingers. If three guys are the same and one is different, that one is Charlie. Excuse me. Who made you Don Corleone? You have a better idea? Yeah, but the woman wrestled for it. Let's just get this over with. <laughs> one, two, three. Again. One, two, damn it. <gasps> one, two, three. No! Sir, my name is Officer Welch, and this is Officer Putney. 
Is this your house? My house? No, no, I live uh, <laughs> elsewhere. Other than here. Yeah, it's too I, I live elsewhere. Oh, not here. Uh, officer, why are you here? What is, what is this about? Yes, we were talking about the house. All right. Calm down. I just want to ask a few questions. Now, who does own this house? Uh, well, if you don't tell us why these questions are being asked, we don't have to answer them. <laughs> You're a lawyer, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well then, as a lawyer, you should already understand that no one is obligated to answer these questions. I was just hoping that someone here would be cooperative enough to tell me who owns the damn house. Oh, Brock! Charlie Brock! And is Mr. Brock home at present? I don't know. Chris? It's Charlie home! <laughs> Charlie? Back soon, then? Uh, no, no, no! It's a dachshund! They take very small steps for uh, No, 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 officer, he, he's home. He, he came down. Well, could I possibly see Mr. Brock then? No, you see, this is, this is an awkward time. We're trying to celebrate a dinner party. Yes, I noticed. What's the occasion? Mr. and Mrs. Brock's 10th wedding anniversary. I'll only take a minute of his time. No, well, Mr. Brock is sleeping. Sleeping in the middle of his anniversary party. He was feeling depressed. Well, could I see Mrs. Brock? Hey, Mrs. Brock is in here. She's not. That's where Mrs. Brock is depressed. He, he took a sleeping pill. And, uh, well, where is she? I don't know. Oh, her father broke his hip. That's where she is. Couldn't someone else take him to the hospital? Uh, well, her father lives in California. Hey, has to do with the words in here? It's very complicated. <laughs> Sir, something wrong with your eye? Me? Uh, um, yes, I, I, I put in some eyedrops before it. The cap fell off, and most of the bottle went in. What's your name, sir? My name? Yes, sir. You, you mean my name? Oh. Yes, sir. Is there something wrong with telling me your name? Oh, no, it's just, it's, uh, it's just that I, I can't see you very well. You don't need to see to talk, sir. The drops didn't go in your mouth, did they? No, okay, okay, okay. I think if you're being unnecessarily abused to these people, if, if you're not going to tell us why you're questioning us, then we don't have to answer anything. All right, I will. Who owns the BMW outside? Oh, that's my husband's car. And his name is? You don't have to answer that! Len! Leonard Gans! And where is Mr. Gans now? I object! <laughs> I ain't a judge. This ain't a courtroom. I don't have a gavel. I just want to know where the man is. Well, you haven't told us why you're here, so we're not telling you where he is. Fine. Why do we always have trouble in this neighborhood? At approximately 8.15 this evening, an auto accident occurred. A brand new red 2012 Porsche convertible slammed into the side of a BMW four-door sedan. Now, we know it wasn't the BMW's fault because the Porsche was a stolen car. But do you know who that Porsche belonged to? Deputy Mayor Charles M. Brock, purchased this very evening by his wife Myra as a surprise wedding anniversary present. No surprise hardly says it. Wait, wait, so you're just here to investigate the car accident? Yes, sir. Oh, if you please, we'd like to see Mr. Leonard Gant. Oh, um, do you think you two could step outside just for one minute? Why? Well, you see, Mr. Brock is my client, and I want to, uh, to consult with him for any further questions. It's within my rights. Please. One minute. That's all you get. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wants to ask Lenny about the car accident, but Lenny can be Lenny, can be Lenny, can be Charlie, can be Charlie, can be Charlie, can be Charlie, because he's a bullet hole in his ear. Do you ever understand him in real life? We don't actually talk that much. Oh, okay, come here. We choose again. Come on. Oh, leave me alone with this stupid game. I know it's stupid, but we need to choose. Never mind. The girls will do it. Come on, girls. Get in a circle. Often's husband is Lenny. My husband is Lenny. No, your husband is Charlie. More play for Glenn. Get in a circle. Ready? One, two, three! 
Your fingers could be. Open your fist. I don't want to lose my earrings. Just yes. one or two fingers, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Oh, it's me. Oh, sorry, It's okay. It's okay. I, 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 I'm ready. Ernie, open the door. Glad to see you're all not dancing again. She's right here in this room. I'm Leonard Gann. You are? How come it took a whole minute to think of your name? I never asked her answers. Harvard Law School. Never trust a man who doesn't know who he's here. Who are you, man? Oh, I'm his wife. His wife's best friend! Her! Mrs. Gann! Are you here alone, ma'am? No, I'm here with my husband, Mr. Gorman. Where is he? <laughs> Some party. His head knocks him down. All right, Mr. Gans, if you could please tell us about the accident. <laughs> Oh, I... Do you think you could step outside again just for another minute, please? No. Oh. I ain't going nowhere. No place, no time. This is it. This is where I stay until I get what I came for. Even if my whole family has to move in. <coughs> What's that? 1047 Putney, over. Right. Check. Hold it. Red 2012 Porsche convertible located at Fifth and Market in Tarrytown. Suspect apprehended. They said it was night. I guess that ties this little bundle up. Oh, sorry to disturb you, folks. Mr. Gans, I'll be some further questioning for you now. Oh, please, Department. Yeah, I see no need to further trouble you. Oh, okay. No problem. Thanks for coming over. Yes. There's the door. Yes, you can go now. You. I've seen you somehow before, haven't I? What's your name again? Glenn. Right. Right from <coughs> Have you ever been on TV? Well, well, as a matter of fact, a, a good acquaintance of mine was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. <laughs> Bes oh, beside that, yes, I'm part of the state senate. That's it. I saw you do an interview on the PBS station. Why were you so nervous about you giving me your name before? Oh, well, oh, well, you know, when you're into politics, you, you don't want to get mixed up with this kind of stuff. Up, but you're hardly involved unless you witness the accident. Oh, no, 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 not at all. You see, my wife and I, we arrived last. We didn't even hear the gunshots. <laughs> what gunshots? What? I said, what gunshots? I, well, I suppose the gunshots said you heard when, when you were chasing the stolen cars. That was 12 miles away over the Terry Town. You got 2020 hearing? 1047 Putney, over. Right. Check. Will do. Neighbors reported two gunshots were fired from inside 1257 Peekskill Road, Sneedon's Landing. Investigate. 1257 Peekskill Road? <coughs> well, it looks like we've got ourselves a double header now, don't we? Who wants to tell me about the gunshots? Gunshots! 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 You heard them, I suppose. Who's the woman outside with the BMW? That, that's my wife, Cassie. I'd like to have a conversation with her. Connie, get her in here. Connie? With a C? Looks like you all had a fine dinner. I'd like to speak to the help, please. There is no help. No help? Who cooked the dinner? Well, I did. And what's your name? Cookie. No, your real name. That is my real name. I have two <laughs> sisters named Candy and Taffy. I swear to God. Is that blood on your shirt, Len? Yeah. <laughs> I must have cut myself with a fork during dinner. <laughs> yeah, that's blue horn. Is that blood on your shirt, Len? Well, uh, yes, I, I suppose so. Uh, I must have rubbed up against Len. Len, we were dancing. Uh. <laughs> Ken, Len, 
Ben and Glenn? That's really weird. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. I guess it must be. My name is Ben. <laughs> You all right, Mrs. Cooper? I'm not pressing any charges. My lawyer will handle this. See, it, it was just an accident. She dropped the electric cigarette lighter in the car, Lucy, and I tried to pull her out by her jacket. Oh no, it's just a crowded back sound, so it's very hard for me to stand, talk, or walk. And you didn't hear the gunshots either, I suppose. <laughs> no, I was dancing! Dancing? Good for my back. <laughs> Mrs. Gordon? What do you do? Well, mostly I've been getting the drinks. Your occupation. Oh, well, nothing. No, not nothing. I mean, I'm a liar. Oh, a lawyer! Sorry! And I'm my mother. I have two children, a boy. Wait, no, one child. I'm very nervous, I'm sorry. You and everybody else, ma'am. All right. I'm gonna say something now that's not really a part of my official capacity. I don't believe a single goddamn word I've heard here tonight. I think there were two gunshots this evening, and that somebody or everyone is trying to cover something up. A man stabs himself with a fork during dinner, the host takes a short-legged dog for a walk and then goes to sleep. The hostess breaks her hip and has to be taken to a hospital in California, and nobody hears two gunshots, because everyone's been dancing, including a woman named Cookie who can't stand or walk. I am a real cop. Understand? You people have to deal with me. I'm not some rinky-dink police officer from Law & Order SVU, all right? Now you can either take five seconds to go up there and bring Charlie Brock down to me, or I will take two seconds to go up there and get him myself. What? Yo, you can't move. Don't mess with me now, buddy. I'm so close to a promotion I can taste it, and I'm not messing it up with this case. Now, do I start counting or do I start taking steps? No, you go. Get me. Wait, 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 wait. Please don't go up there. There's something history up there, huh? Uh, uh Hardy and, and Ken. I mean, Matt. Uh, is, is, isn't it high time that we, that we call on Charlie and ask him to come on down? Yes, yes, let's do that right now. Charlie, it's Ernie. Are you ready for us now? We're ready for you now. That's just a hysteric nerve reaction, Charlie. What's wrong with him? Oh, he thinks he went temporarily blind. Just put a coat towel on your eye and come down. There's a couple of police officers here who want to speak to you. Why? Because you put one finger out! That's why! He's fine, folks. He's coming down. See, the truth is, officer, Charlie Brock is a very dear friend of ours, and we know we would be in much jeopardy if we keep holding the truth back any longer. There, there were two gunshots here tonight. I, I personally didn't hear either of them, but I do share equal blame with those that did hear them, but did come forth with the information sooner despite the fact that I didn't hear either of them. Stop helping too much, Gwen. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm sure Mr. Rock is going to tell us the full and complete story, the details of which none of us has heard yet, about, about the missing health, about the disappearance of his wife, Myra, and, and about the two gunshots, which, again, neither that I heard. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Feeling better, Charlie? Hi, Charlie! Good evening, Mr. Brock. My name is Officer Welch, and this is Officer Bundy. If you please, the department would appreciate an account of tonight's events. Would anyone like a levy dog? Oh, yes, please, ma'am. I tell you what's the fault. Not now, ma'am. Go on, Mr. Brock. Um, okay. The story, as it happened, as I'm remembering it, as I'm telling it. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Okay, okay, here we go. At 
at exactly 6 o'clock tonight, I came home from work. My wife, Myra, was in the dressing room getting dressed for the party. I went to the refrigerator, got a bottle of champagne, and headed upstairs. Rosita, our Spanish cook, was in the kitchen with Romera, her Spanish sister, and Romero, her Spanish son. They were preparing an Italian dinner. They were waiting for Myra to tell them when to start cooking the dinner. <coughs> now, as I climbed the stairs, I said to myself, it's my 10th wedding anniversary, and I can't believe I love my wife so much. Myra was putting on a perfume that I bought her for Christmas. I purposely buy it for her because it drives me crazy. I tapped on the door, tap, tap, tap. She opens it. I hand her a glass of champagne, and I make a toast. To the best wife a man could ever have in 10 wonderful years. And she toasts to the best man a wife could ever have in 10 wonderful years. We drink. We kiss. We toast again to the loveliest skin on the loveliest body that has never aged a day in ten wonderful years. She toasts to the gentlest hands that have ever stroked the loveliest skin that has never aged a day in ten wonderful years. We drink, we kiss, we toast, we drink with each other. Okay, now by seven o'clock the bottle is finished, wine white is sloshed, and I am completely toasted. You're gonna smell the perfume. Oh, that perfume that I can't resist. I tell you this with such passion and our doors the night we were first when he went. We lay there spent naked in each other's arms, completely departed each other's happiness. It's now eight o'clock and outside is growing dark. And suddenly we hear Jeff knock at the door. Knock, knock, knock. The door opens and a strange young man is standing there with a knife in his hand. Myra screams, ah! I don't have to go get my gun. Now Myra should have someone to tell. Now I'm running back with my gun, ready to save my wife's life. When all of a sudden the strange kitchen is in Spanish, Yo, Quito! Sentado, it's a lot of a puesto en Quito Minuto! Now, I don't speak any Spanish, and I never saw Romero's son, Romero's son, or Romero before, and I didn't know if the knife was to cut the salad, and that they were asking Myra if they should start preparing the dinner. So now I'm aiming my gun at him, and all of a sudden, Myra screams and puts my ear to my gun away, and I shoot myself in the other. <laughs> so Romero's son, Romero, right down to the top of Gino Romero, Mamacita! Me la que paso en Paco, eh? Ay, ay, ay! Then we'll have no dinner, but they leave in their Alfa Romeo. So now we hear we hear the car pulling up, and we know it's the first guest arriving. And I go out to the window, but it's dark, and I think someone's sitting in my beautiful old Mercedes. So I take another shot at them. Boom! Now Myra's running downstairs to the basement to the cedar chest, if she can find the dress she wore last year for. Bonds for Israel. But she can't run the light, trips down the stairs, and passes down the basement floor. Now I run downstairs looking for Myra and notice that the basement door is open. And me, you know, just knowing I think the kid is gonna come back, so I locked the basement door, not knowing that Myra, Myra was down there. So now I'm running back upstairs to take some bathroom to my earlobe, because my earlobe is killing me from the hole in it. But the blood in my fingers gets in my eyes, and by accident I take four volume instead. Now I tell my guest down, I want to go hear my guest downstairs, I want to tell him to look for Myra, but suddenly I can't talk from the value. And my blood is dripping all over the white rug. So I start to write a no, but it looks like gibberish. And then it looks like gibberish, I might think that they think it's a suicide note. And then they'll call the police. Duh! And I don't want them to call the police because my best friend, Glenn Cooper's coming. And this would be very, very bad for the campaign. <coughs> so I tore up the note and flushed down the toilet. <laughs> and as this is all happening, they're running in and yelling at me. What happened? What happened? And before the time I can tell them what happened, I pass out on my bed. And that's the whole goddamn story. As sure as my name is. Charlie Brock. You know something, Mr. Brock? I like it. I don't buy it, but I like it. You know why I like it, Mr. Brock? Because I love my wife, too. That's why I want to get home early tonight. Understand? Yes. Sorry to disturb you folks, and Mr. Brock, a very happy anniversary. Well. Holy shit. How did you manage to come up with a story like that? I don't know, I made it up. Of course you made it up, but, but when? Sentence by sentence, word by word, I didn't know where I was going, but I just kept going with it. You don't even speak Spanish. I know, I made up the Spanish too. <laughs> you idiot. We 
have ever come across. To my husband, Lenny, just when I was starting to lose faith in our marriage, I fell in love with him all over again. To so Lenny. You know, I have an interesting question. What? What do you think really happened to Charlie and I? Charlie? It's Charlie! Charlie, how are you feeling? Oh, yes, we're all here. Are you up to having some visitors? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Well, he'll be right up. Yes. Charlie's going to tell us the entire story. Oh, well, I hope it's shorter than Lenny's story. <laughs> Can we go back and get my crystal later? Please, don't worry, honey. Ha <laughs> ha.